ministers will spend nearly £170,000 on migrants sent to Rwanda and the plans will save taxpayers money only if almost 40% of those crossing are deterred. This is asking for the impossible. The Home Office Impact Assessment said it was not possible to establish how much the new plans would cost overall and whether it would result in fewer migrants crossing the channel. When the whole point of this was that it should result in fewer people trying to cross the channel. And we absolutely know that isn't going to be the case. Any time we've heard any big announcement from the government, whether it was initially announced in the Rwanda plan, there's been a few other uh, elements of this that have been thrown in over the last couple of years, there's been no deterrent to this. People have kept on coming. It suggests that forcibly removing migrants to a third world country like Rwanda could cost about £169,000 per individual. With a benefit, now if you took all the other, the reduced accommodation of not accommodating that particular individual, uh, reduced with benefit of £106,000 in reduced accommodation costs. So it's just the, uh, just the £69,000 then. Wow. To effectively break even for the economic benefits of the policy to exceed the cost, the plans would have to deter nearly 40% of those crossing the channel. Is that still, as far as you're concerned, money well spent? Would you still support this scheme, even though you now know it's likely to cost about £170,000? 0344 499 That is where you'll find us. Uh, let's speak with George Pascoe Watson, former political editor of The Sun, a man who regularly helps us out on the day's news. George, afternoon to you. Hello there, Ian. Always good to have you with us. Um, 170, it's, a, it's a bit steep, this one, isn't it? It's quite, quite hard to swallow figures like £170,000 per person, even when you do factor out all the other elements as well. Well, I would say, what's the cost of the alternative? Um, you know, nothing like this is going to be free, nothing like this is going to be cheap, but also it costs us £22, £23 million pounds a day to deal with the refugee uh, numbers that we are dealing with right now. So somebody has to take action to try and stop things yeah. and, and to try and change the position. And £170,000 is an astronomic amount of money per individual, but you have to, in the end, uh, match it against the total lifetime cost of having more and more people in the country. And, of course, the system is clogged up, so people are taking more than a year yeah. plus to have their adjudications done and, and of course if that was much more swift and much more efficient then we wouldn't have to uh, have the astronomic bills that we're currently facing so it is a big sum of money of course it is but of course the aim is to have a system where 40 percent plus are stopped coming and they decide not to come in the first place and then you do break even and then you'll be saying you'll be the first people to say what a brilliant policy it's worked do you think I mean, the emphasis, George, as, as we all know, what most people want to see is to, to not be in this position in the first place. So we don't have people crossing because those people are deterred at a much earlier point in the journey. But that seems to have eluded the collective brains of the French and the British. Well, I mean, I think if you were asking the Home Secretary, she would say this is exactly what I am trying to do, which is to try and create a position where people think, oh, I don't want to go to Rwanda, that's not my intention, and so I will decide to not go to Britain. And, and obviously what they need to do is to begin to show that it is actually working and they are moving people to Rwanda, which is not really happening. So the, uh, the, the pull factor to Britain right now is way more attractive than the pull factor to stay where you are or do something else and so it's a question of building in policies which are manifestly and obviously unattractive to yeah. people to try to come to this country of course it must be said and it's important to say that britain remains and should remain a place which is a real safe haven for genuine refugees do you th and of course i think most people support that point i i, I guess that you know the, the proof will we'll, we will see in a couple of years time if we ever uh, get to that stage I, I would imagine george it would be unlikely that if a labor government were to come in uh, at the next election I, I can't imagine them continuing with this policy it, it's not really in their dna to do this one uh, and if that does happen uh, and you know all the signs are pointing in that direction then there'll be more taxpayers money spent Correct. on a new system and the dismantling of all the contracts that go into putting in this system uh, will happen and that will cost taxpayers even more money because when you are a private firm and you contract with the government and the contract is broken then you are, are justifiably able to yeah. claim money back for breach of contract and yet more taxpayers money goes on that.
Uh, here's a confusing one. Matt Hancock. Uh, I mean, who doesn't like a Matt Hancock story? Of course, you know, the, in many respects, the gift that keeps on giving. Uh, just at a time when I thought there was a, a, at least a, an understanding that if we ever went into a pandemic again, there may be a, a big old rethink of lockdown policy would be front and centre of any government thinking. Well, he's been giving evidence, of course, at the COVID inquiry. He, he said today the UK must be prepared to hit a pandemic hard and lock down, if necessary, to prevent diseases spreading. Um, he's, of course, giving evidence uh, as the man that was absolutely pivotal to our policy during that time. Uh, many people are going to be angry, George, to hear almost Mr Hancock doubling down in some respects on the lockdown point. I think that's right. And I think COVID will for forever split uh, audiences and some people will say we didn't do enough some people will say we did too much but hancock's point this morning to the inquiry is that when he arrived in office the country was prepared for the impact uh, of a mass outbreak rather than stopping a mass outbreak and that's the thing he's really concentrating on uh, so that that sort of uh, mistake never happens again in the future and you know it's very hard for him it's very hard for any uh, person in power at the time to make the right decisions given all the difficulties at the time you look back at the iraq inquiry you know tony blair was the man in in the chair when 9 11 happened he had to make decisions best based on the best information that he had and in the end it's a judgment call uh, we're all humans and people sometimes make the wrong calls but at the same time he will i'm sure point to some of the successes he had uh, in the, in that period. But of course, lots and lots of emotion, rightly so. Yep. Uh, I don't know anybody who wasn't impacted by COVID in some way. Lots of people uh, were unable to see their dying relatives or be with their dying relatives. Yes. And that has a lasting impact for everybody. And it is something which I, I, I think the government will say that they took into consideration, but some people will say, you did too much. Yeah, indeed. George, as ever, thank you. George Pascoe Watson. He is, of course, former political editor over there at The Sun with us on Talk TV. It's interesting, just on that last point, uh, what Hancock said uh, when giving evidence there, it's uh, central to what we must learn as a country that we've got to be ready to hit a pandemic hard, that we've got to be able to take action, uh, lockdown, action if necessary, uh, that is wider, earlier and more stringent than feels comfortable at the time. So I think we take from that that what he was saying is our lockdown should have been more robust to begin with and should have happened quicker. Is that more or less where he's at on this? I assume it is. Um, we'll, we'll take your comments on that one as well. I, I think this is extraordinary. I don't... Look, look the lockdown thing happened globally. Uh, we all kind of went with it for a few weeks thinking, right, this is kind of it, isn't it? You know, flatten curves and stuff like that, and then we can move forward. Uh, what we know now, we didn't know then. I get all of that as well. We also know that lockdowns have caused the most immeasurable distress uh, in, in so many respects. Everything from literally death uh, to uh, decimated businesses, mental health issues for kids, and Lord knows what else. 0344 499 1000. Uh, we'll take your calls on the Rwanda policy as well. Uh, is it worth £170,000 £170, to deport people to Rwanda? And still, uh, the government in this country and in France are unable... I, I, I don't... I, I'll be bold here. I don't actually believe it. I, I can't believe they cannot come up with a plan that will stop the boats leaving in the first place. Because that ultimately solves it, right? But apparently they can't do that. The drones don't do their droney thing in the efficient way you'd like to think. 0344 499 1000. This is Talk TV. <laughs>